So hi, my name is John Tennant and I'm the founder of the Open Science MOOC. Welcome to Module 5 on Open Research Software and Open Source. In this module, we're going to learn about the importance of open source software in a modern research environment. This module will help to teach us the relevant knowledge and tools and skills we need to transform something that can be openly accessed and reused by others. This video will help, help to answer a key question for you. Why is open source software important for you and your research? To help with this, we've spoken with six researchers from across the world who each use open source software in their daily practices and can help to testify to the great impact it has had on their own research workflows. Because for us, open source is just as much about the people as it is the technology. Hi there, my name is Abigail kabunak Mays. I am the Working Open Practice Lead for the Mozilla Foundation. Um, I actually have a background in bioinformatics and computer science, and I was really lucky to be able to start my career um, writing open source software for scientists. I had some great mentors with uh, Todd Harris and Lincoln Stein. Um, I worked on the Wormbase project, which is a CL against data repository. And uh, CL against being the little worms, the model organism. So a lot of people were studying this worm, are studying this worm. And this experience helped me see how writing a relatively small piece of software um, impacted a huge community. So instead of having to read through all the latest literature, researchers could just go to Wormbase and see what the newest updates were. Um, and by providing data analysis tools, we really helped to facilitate insights um, into this model organism, and I think we really helped with innovation. So that whole experience with Wormbase really helped me see the value of open science, why it's so important for people to be sharing what they're learning um, and iterating on what other people have done. So that's actually why I joined Mozilla, because I do want to see openness be the norm in innovation and research. Thanks. Hello, my name is Conrad. As bioinformaticians, my team and I are involved in numerous research projects where we analyze and integrate large data sets. For those, we basically build only upon open source research software. For example, for analyzing high throughput sequencing data, we use open source tools like SAM tools, BAT tools, or STAR. We have applied those tools in numerous projects, for example, to explore what happens when the bacterial pathogen Salmonella infects human cells and how they react on that. We also have improved numerous genome annotations of bacteria by using RNA-seq data and open source research software. We also have to write very often our own tools and analysis workflows. For this, we, for example, bid strongly on the open programming language Python that provides us powerful libraries like Pandas for crunching tabular data or Seaborn for visualizations. And for sure, we also share our tools as open source software in order to give others the chance to learn from it, see what we did, and apply them to their own research projects. Nobody has to reinvent the wheel. Data analysis and coding is so much fun, and I'm always amazed how much you can do with rather little effort due to the fact that we have a rich ecosystem of open source tools and open source libraries. I'm pretty sure if you look around in your own research environment and own field, you will feel the same. Enjoy this module on open source software. Hello, my name is Heidi Seiwold and I am a statistician uh, working in the medical field. One of the things that I like best about my job is writing code and working on software packages. I got into writing code already during my bachelor's and for my bachelor thesis, I wrote my very first R package. With the R package, you can estimate risk zones for unexploded bombs. And I published this package as an open source software, my first contribution to science. After and during my master's, I got more interested in medicine and with this, um, less interested in developing this R package further. Luckily, someone else started a project in this direction and I am happy to say 
that the package has now a new motivated maintainer who will take much better care of it than I would. So to me, this shows very well how making software open to others will um, keep the work visible and up to date even after I started working in a different field. This year I finished my PhD and all the papers that I wrote during my PhD um, either directly discuss our packages or use R for the statistical analyses. So my ability to work with R has helped me greatly in my scientific career and by sharing it with everyone openly, so the sharing my code, um, I am sure that my research is much more valuable for scientific progress than it would have been if I had kept it for myself. Writing open source software to liberate knowledge uh, for everybody. Uh, our software is called Amy. Um, Here's Amy, the mascot, uh, and we run into a little bit of problem. Uh, next slide. Um, we're stuck. We need a Java command line toolkit. Uh, the old ones are not very good, uh, and we've got a lot of work to do here. So go out on the web. Next one. And we found one. It's called PicoCli, uh, and it's wonderful. It does everything we want. Next slide. And more. We got it working. Uh, it's fantastic. And so today, yeah, um, we tweeted thank you on the web. And look what came out. Here's the author of the software himself. And he's saying, what a wonderful thing to have some thanks because it gives you so much support, so much encouragement, uh, and so on. So there's two happy groups the authors of the software, and the consumers of software. So thank you, Remco, for Picoli, and we'll be talking more together. Hi, guys. My name is Anna, and I did my PhD in uh, computational biology and genomics. But currently, I'm working as a data scientist. I have founded my own company that helps other companies to analyze uh, genetics and genomic data sets and other big type of data. So um, why open source software? Why reproducible research? Actually, my first touch with that was nearly 10 years ago when I just started my PhD. And at that time, I was definitely not a software developer and definitely not a great coder. I was at that time mostly biologist, learning how to analyze my data sets. And that was the time when I started learning about R uh, is the first go-to statistical tool and actually persuaded my own uh, lab leader to adopt it instead of uh, just purely developing everything from scratch in Perl. And that was great, great idea because um, um, because with that ability to actually contribute and develop in R, we became a lot more collaborative and could reuse what other people have been developing in the same field. But um, I think what is even more important is that now everything related to open science, uh, reproducible research is extremely important regardless of whether you are staying in academia or you go to industry. Because if you look how all the technological companies work right now is that they need to know reproducible research. They, they actually using predominantly open source software, they open sourcing everything that they're developing because this is how this ecosystem works. You use what other develops and you contribute back. And that's how you help others to grow and you're growing yourself. So my advice to you is that um, take this course and learn not only about how to use open source software, but how to make your own research and your own work reproducible, repeatable, and open for others. Because it's exactly how you will be able to succeed in your career, regardless of whether you're going to be a scientist and researcher or you're going to move to industry. Um, I hope that you will learn this skill from this course, and I hope that you will enjoy this course as well. 
Hello, my name is Ina. I'm the project manager for the African Open Science Platform Initiative. I think the future of the African continent is open. Open science, open access, open data and open source software, all sharing the same philosophy. For having access to the code, um, our current and new developers and data scientists can build on existing tools, not having to start from scratch which is important in terms of catching up with the rest of the world. And through having access to the code, we can reduce the digital divide currently existing amongst Africa and the rest. We can also not afford an unhealthy dependency on commercial software um, providers because Africa can simply not afford paying for the very expensive products. In the second instance, I think, um, it's a great opportunity for Africans to demonstrate that they can also give back and can contribute, not only downloading, but also in building on what's available. I wish you well with this course and um, enjoy. So there we have it. Six awesome stories from some talented researchers about the transformation that open source software can have on our own research practices. These tools truly have the potential to make our lives as researchers much easier, making our research more efficient, cost effective and transparent. In the rest of this module, we will learn a little more about the principles and the community behind open source software, how to make our own good software for reuse, and also how to cite any software that we might use in our own research. As well as this, we have three practical tasks that will firstly help us to set up our own project in GitHub, secondly, how to index and archive this project using Zenodo to make it more citable, and finally, how to integrate Git with the program language R. Hopefully, by the end of this module, you'll be able to take and apply these skills and knowledge to make your daily activities as a researcher more efficient. The next part of this module is just an introduction to what open source software is. So, enjoy!